we are in a chapter that is the first chapter of mathematics arithmetic progressions we completed many larger portion of this particular chapter and we already completed exercise 1.1 1.2 and we are in exercise 1.3 and you are all familiarized with the content of arithmetic progression all the problems what i am going to solve are based on application type therefore we are solving the problems based on four formulas before starting the class i wanted to recollect the information what i told in the previous classes first one is definition of ap ap is nothing but a list of numbers in which each term is obtained by adding a fixed number to its preceding term except for the first term which is the general form of an arithmetic progression a is the first term a plus d is the second term a plus 2d is the third term a plus 3d is the fourth term like that that is called the general formula a is called the first term d is called the common difference to find the common difference we have a formula general usually we use d is equal to a2 minus a1 in ap but the formula is d is equal to an minus an minus 1 and uh, the formulas four formulas the first one is an is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d this and three formulas related to the sum sn is equal to n into n plus 1 but divided by 2 sn is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d sn is equal to n by 2 into a plus l using these formulas we solve many number of problems now i am in exercise 1.3 and i am in the problem 11 11th problem is based on a skill see we solve problems and after solving problem we learn a lot so using our knowledge of solving the previous problems we have to solve this particular problem we have to think in this problem it is a thinking type of problem you have to apply your mind to understand each and every problem so see here what is telling is 11th problem exercise 1.3 very important it is a skill based it is not related to any formula it is it is a skill based means a person is having a mathematical aptitude he can understand all these things see if the sum of the first n terms of an ap is 4n minus n square means he is telling that if the sum of the first n terms of an ap is 4n minus n square he only formulating an equation like this sn sn is equal to 4n minus n square this is the formula he created sn is equal to 4n minus n square now what we have to find is we have to find the first term he is given sn we have to find a1 using this sn we have to find a1 this is all based on common sense common sense try to understand this is not related to any of the arithmetic progression it should have a common sense see sum of the terms is given sn is equal to 4n minus n square find the first term means if there is only one term is there then what is the sum sum is also same number only for example let us imagine there is an equation there is a list of number it is having only one number that is 5 what is the sum of the numbers here 5 only because the number is 5 Num the sum is also equal to 5 therefore when they are given sn if you wanted to find a1 you have to understand this in the place of n you have to replace 1 in the place of n you have to replace what 1 to get a1 i write like this see sn is nothing but sn is nothing but if i write in the place of n if i write 1 it becomes s1 how to read one s1 sum of the first term If there is only one term, the sum itself is the first term only. Therefore, S one is nothing but A one. S one is nothing but what? A one. If I write S two, S two means A one plus A two. Understand? S two means sum of the two terms. 
S1 means what? S1 means sum of the one term. If one term is there, that itself is the sum. If I write S2, it becomes A1 plus A2. If sum of the two terms is represented by S2, if it is S3, S3 is equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3. If I want S10, S10 is equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 up to 10 you have to add. Therefore you have to understand S1, sum of the first one term means that is nothing but the A1. Therefore A1 and S1 is one and the same. That you have to understand. S2 means A1 plus A2. S3 means A1 plus A2 plus A3. That way you have to understand this particular problem. Now what is asking? Find the first term. Find the first term means I replace. See this is the formula he is given. Sn is equal to 4n minus n square. Put n is equal to 1. Put n is equal to 1. When I, when I put n is equal to 1, this becomes S1. S1 is equal to 4 of 1 minus 1 square. Where there is n, replace it as 1. Then it becomes what? S1 is equal to 4 into 1 is 4 minus 1 square is 1 into 1, 1. S1 is equal to 3. S1, 4 minus 1 is 3. But S1 is nothing but what? A1. Therefore, A1 is equal to 3. Find the first term he asked. The first term is first term. First term is 3. Which is the first term? 3. Now again I repeat. He is given an equation. SN is equal to 4N minus N square. Find the first term. Find the first term mean. It is S stands for what? Sum. First term sum. Sum of the one term. If there is only one term. Then the sum is the same term itself. Therefore I replace 1 in the place of n. I got 4 into 1. That is equal to uh, 1 square. Then s1 is equal to 4 minus 1. s1 is equal to 3. I understood that s1 is nothing but a1. Therefore a1 is 3. What is a1? a1 is the first term. First term is 3. Any part of the problem is we are to find a2. We are to find the second term. To find the second term what I do is First I write the formula given by him. That is Sn is equal to 4n minus n square. My purpose is I wanted to find the second term. He is given Sn. Now what I do is put n is equal to 2. Because I wanted to find second term. For that one first I find the sum of the two terms. That is S2. What is the meaning of S2? Sum of the first two terms. S2 stands for what? Sum of the first two terms is equal to 4 of 2 minus 2 square. Again, S2. Sum of the first two terms is equal to 4 into 2 is 8 minus 2 square is 4. 2 square is 4. Again, I write be careful, you have to read this. This is not A2, it is not second term. It is the sum of the first two terms is equal to 8 minus 4 means 4. Sum of the first two terms is equal to 4. Sum of the first two terms should be written like this. A1 plus A2 is equal to 4. But I already calculated the value of A1. Therefore, I, what I do is put a1 is equal to put a1 is equal to 3. That is already calculated. Now, in the place of a1, I write 3. 3 plus a2 is equal to 4. 3 plus a2 is equal to 4. Therefore, a2 is equal to a2 is equal to 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Therefore, 1 is the value of the second term. 3 is the value of the first term. 
when you add the first term and the second term you get four that that is called sum of the first two terms therefore s stands for the sum a stands for the term he is given sum we are finding the term this is the first two uh, problems of the problem number 7 still problems are there we have to find s3 we are to, uh, we are to find the third term tenth term and the nth term we have to calculate for that one there is a trick the trick we have to understand and then we solve the remaining problems we have to understand one thing here one is first i told you s1 s1 stands for a1 s1 and a1 are one and the same what is the how to read s1 sum of the first one term sum of the first one term is nothing but the first term s2 means what s2 means sum of the first two terms we already calculated this s2 stands for sum of the first two terms therefore to find the second term what i did is first i calculated s2 then i already calculated a1 and then from s2 i subtracted a1 i got uh, uh, a2 right now 3 try to understand s3 means what a1 plus a2 plus uh, a3 now tell me if i wanted to find a3 what should i do if i wanted to find a3 what should i do or well, i should find a1 sorry s1 s2 s3 then from s3 i should subtract s1 s2 that all there is no need to do that see now i am forming a formula a new formula we are going to derive it is a skill don't think that it is a formula it is a skill what is the skill how tell me what is a1 plus a2 if i take a1 plus a2 a1 plus a2 is nothing but s2 isn't it therefore s3 is equal to s2 plus a3 right s3 is equal to in the place of a1 and a2 a1 plus a2 i can write s2 plus a3 now s2 i transfer this side s3 minus s2 is equal to a3 now i got one relation if i wanted to find the value of a3 what should i do is i find the value of s3 from the value of s3 if i remove the value of s2 i get the third term understood now see now we frame a formula a3 if i want a3 what i should do s3 minus s2 i should find s3 minus s2 now tell me suppose if i want a4 what should i do if i want fourth term if i want fourth term what i do is s4 minus s3 for sum of the first four terms minus sum of the first three terms i get the fourth term suppose tenth term i want suppose if i want a10 a10 means s10 first you find the sum of the first 10 terms from that sum subtract sum of the nine terms from the sum of the 10 terms if you subtract sum of the nine terms you get the 10th term understood now tell me suppose 100th term if you want a 100 is equal to what you do first you find the sum of the 100 terms minus from that sum subtract sum of the first 99 terms then you get the 100th term because 100 minus 99 which number is left 100th number is it 10 minus 9 means which number left 10th number 4 minus 3 4 minus 3 means fourth number is left same way if i write a n this n can be anything a n is equal to s n minus one number previous sum s n minus 1 a n is equal to s n minus s n minus 1 this is the formula to find 
to solve this type of problems. This is not a formula. It is a skill of solving a problem. If you wanted to find the nth term from the sum, how to find what is the relationship between the term and the sum? If I wanted to tenth the nth term, you first find the sum of the n terms minus sum of the n minus one term. You left with the nth term. You are you can able to understand. I repeat once again. Once again, I repeat. I am not solving the problem because after writing the skill format, then only we go for solving the problem. Yes, one means one. S1 is nothing but A1. First term and the sum of the one term is same. S2 means one. Sum of the first two terms. A1 plus A2 is equal to S2. S3 means one. A1 plus A2 plus A3. That is, sum of the first three terms is equal to S3. Suppose, if they are given sum of the th three terms, how to find the third term? How to find the third term? The formula is we can find the third term by using the sum as S3 minus S2. From the sum of the three terms, if you subtract sum of the first two terms, you get the third term. The same way, see, if you wanted the fourth term, what you have to do? From the sum of the four terms, subtract sum of the three terms, you get the fourth term. If you want 10th term, you have to subtract the sum of the 9 terms from the sum of the 10 terms. The same way we can derive a relationship between, it is not a formula, it is a relationship between terms, number of terms and the sum of the terms. Relationship between A and S the sum. Formula is An is equal to Sn minus Sn minus 1. That you have to keep in mind to solve this type of problem. Once you understand this, solving this problem is easy. It is a skill. It is. This type of thing always comes for multiple choice. Always comes for multiple choice. They simply give SN is equal to some equation they give. Find the 10th uh, term, 14th term, 15th term. That problem we can solve using this relation. This relation is AN. Nth term is nothing but the difference of sum of the n terms minus sum of the n minus 1 term. Using this, I am going to solve the problems given in the problem number 11 of exercise 1.3. First, see. First, pro first, pro first problem of 11th one is find first term. Easy. First term is nothing but what? S1. Second term we calculated as we calculated S2 and then we subtracted the first term from the S2 to get the second term. Now he is asking for find the third term. Third term. Therefore, third term is equal to, I write the equation like this. The third term is equal to A3 is equal to S3. See properly. A3 is equal to S3 minus S2. A3 is equal to S3 minus S2. Now, what is SN? SN is equal to, he is given SN is equal to what? 4N minus N square. This is the relation he is given in the problem. This is the relation he is given in the problem. Now, what I do is, I find S3. First, S3 is equal to 4 of 3 Wherever n is there, replace it as 3, minus 3 square. I write like this, 4 into 3, 12, minus 3 square is 9. 3 square is what? 9. 3 into 3 is 9. 4 into 3, 12, minus 3 square is 9. 12 minus, 12 minus 9 is 3. Therefore, S3 is equal to 3. Means what? Sum of the first 3 terms is equal to 3. Then what I do is, I find S2. I find S2. S2 is equal to, wherever N is there, write 2. Wherever N is there, write 2. 2 minus 2 square. 
there our n is there right two, which is equal to 4 into 2 8 minus 2 square is 4 8 minus 4 is 4 now by subtracting s3 minus s2 by subtracting s3 minus s2 what you have to get a3 a3 you get by subtracting s3 minus s2 what do you have to get a3 a3 is equal to then there is nothing directly i go there a3 is equal to 3 my you have to subtract you have to subtract minus s3 minus s2 is equal to a3 3 minus 4 is equal to minus 1 a3 is equal to minus 1 that is the answer for a3 same way we have to find the tenth term we have to find what tenth term that is the next one now you understand the uh, th third problem third term is a3 is equal to s3 minus s2 this is the formula first i write s3 s3 means wherever n is there write 3 you get 3 S2 means wherever n is there, right to 2, you get 4. Subtract 3 minus 4 is minus 1. Minus 4 is the answer for A3. A3 is equal to, I write it here. A3, third term. A3 is equal to how much I got? Minus 1. Now see, see, here only see. Now which, which one you want? Tenth term you want. You can do. See. Now I want tenth term. I don't take change thing. Tenth term. What I do is I write the three as ten. If I want tenth term, what should I do? If I want tenth term, I minus s ten minus s nine. Yes, not ten minus s nine is a a ten. You should able to understand. This is logic. It is common sense. Tenth term is equal to s ten minus s n. The equation what is given is s n is equal to four n minus n square. Now I change this. What I do is see, first I find s ten. S ten means what? Wherever n is there, there write ten. Therefore it becomes four of n is there. Four n means four into ten. Minus n square means 10 square, which is equal to 4 into 10 is 40. 4 into 10 is 40 minus 10 square is 100. 10 square is 100. 40 minus 100 is equal to minus 60. 40 minus 100 is equal to minus 60. 10 is over. Now what I want? S9 means what? Wherever n is there, write 9. Which is equal to 4 of, in the place of n I write 9, minus 9 square. Which is equal to 4 into 9 is 36. Minus 9 square is 81. 9 square is what? 81. Now we have to subtract it. When subtracting sign of the bigger number you have to write here yeah, minus is there therefore this is minus 11 minus 6 is 5 11 minus 6 is what? 5 11 minus this is 7 7 minus 3 is 4 7 minus 3 is 4 now we have to subtract therefore S10 minus S9 is equal to 8 therefore you have to minus subtract this is not required. Directly go there. Yeah. I wanted to subtract. When subtract the sign changes. When subtract sign changes. This is minus 60. This is plus 45. Because this minus changes into plus. From 60 you have to subtract 45. You get 15. Sign of the bigger number means minus 15. Therefore, tenth term is minus 15. Tenth term is minus 15. I write it here. See, third term is minus 1, tenth term is minus 15. Still this problem is not over. I want to find the nth term. A n to calculate. A n to calculate. Same thing. See. Little complicated it becomes. 
say Tantata. I want Yantata. Yantata. Yantata means what? See, I change this. Yantata means Yayan is equal to Yasyan minus Yasyan minus 1. Yayan is equal to Yasyan minus Yasyan minus 1. SN is 0. Now I am going to find the value because it is an algebraic number. Therefore, we solve in a different way. See how we wanted to find SN minus SN minus 1. Therefore, I write like this AN is equal to, again I write SN minus SN minus 1. AN is equal to, now be careful, SN means he is given a formula. SN is equal to what? 4N minus N square. In the place of SN, I write 4N minus N square. In the place of SN, I write 4N minus N square. Minus, I put a bracket here. Now what is this? N minus 1. Therefore, 4 in the place of n I should write n minus 1 4 of n minus 1 4 of n minus 1 minus n square means n minus 1 whole square this is my equation a n is equal to 4 n minus n square minus of 4 of n minus 1 minus n minus 1 whole square now we have to simplify. Be careful while simplifying because algebraic like numbers are you are studying A plus B whole square, A minus B whole square. From fifth standard you are learning and using that we are going to solve this. Now you have to recollect all the information of your 8th standard, 9th standard, everything. See, A N I write as it is, which is equal to 4N minus n square 4n minus n square minus of bracket I start now remove the bracket here inside inside 4 into n 4n minus 4 into 1 4 then minus there is another bracket there because n minus 1 whole square it is a minus B whole square. See, now you have to tell me. What is the formula for A minus B whole square? A plus B whole square, A minus B whole square. You started learning from fifth standard. A minus B. A plus B whole square is equal to A square plus B square plus 2AB. A minus B whole square is equal to A square plus B square minus 2AB. Here what is there? N minus 1 whole square. In the place of a minus b, it is there given n minus 1. n minus 1 whole square is equal to, first one is a square means n square. Plus b square means 1 square. Minus 2ab means 2 into n into 1. Bracket. See, this is n minus 1 whole square. n square plus 1 square minus 2 into n into 1. A minus B. Now again simplification. A n is equal to 4 n minus n square minus of 4 n minus 4. Now see. Now we are, I am removing this bracket. Minus n square. Minus 1 square is 1 minus 1. Minus into minus plus. 2 into n into 1 is 2n. Now, that small bracket is gone. There is one more bracket is left, that is big bracket. Right? Now, what I do is, an is equal to 4n minus n square. Now, minus into 4n minus 4n. Minus into minus plus 4. Minus into minus plus n square. Minus into minus plus 1. Minus into plus minus 2m. 
Now what you have to do? Any common factor, elimination is that eliminate. I, I can easily see the eliminated part is one is 4n plus 4n minus 4n gone. Minus n square, see? Minus n square plus n square gone. Then what is left? See. What is left you have to write. A n is equal. So always write positive first and then go to the negative. Gone, gone, gone. Here it is there. 4 is there. 1 is there. 4 plus 1, 5. Then uh, left with minus 2. Yeah. Therefore, nth term is equal to 5 minus 2 n. That is the answer for n. See children, this is a very small simple problem it is. But logical problem. What is this problem tells? What is the relationship between sum and the terms? Sum of the one term means S1. Sum of the one term is nothing but A1. Therefore, S1 and A1 are same. No difference. But S2 means what? S2 means A1 plus A2 is equal to S2. S3 means what? S3 is equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3. Like that you should be able to understand. But be careful. S1 is nothing but A1. In all other cases it is not equal. Then to find the terms what you have to do is there is a relation. An is equal to Sn. An is equal to Sn minus Sn minus 1. Therefore, in the examination, if they ask, find the 25th term. Find the 25th term means A25 you have to find. A25 to find what you have to do? S25 minus S24. S25 minus S24. You get A25. The same. S10 if you want. A10 you want. A10 you want. A10 is equal to S10 minus S9. A10 is equal to S10 minus S9. One difference of one number. Difference of one number. Now if, if you want A6. A6 is equal to S6 minus S5. That you have to keep in mind. The general format, the general skill is. Uh, Sn is equal to. Say An is equal to. Sn minus Sn minus 1. Therefore be careful about the 11th problem. 11th problem, many number of times they are given in multiple examination as uh, multiple choice. Multiple choice. The relation is An is equal to Sn minus Sn minus 1. The difference of one number gives you that term. 12th problem. Important again, I, I tell you, after the 4th problem, majority of the problem are important for public examination is concerned. Because all these problems are going to fetch you 3 and 4 marks. You concentrate. Concentrate. You have to write. You have to understand this. Find the sum of the first 40 positive integers. Understand children? Positive integer means positive numbers. Positive numbers are nothing but natural numbers. Positive in 40 positive integer divisible by 6. We have to select 40 numbers, positive numbers, which are divided by 6. Therefore, first try to write the list of numbers, which are divided by 6. And we have to get how many numbers, such numbers? 40 numbers. Therefore, see, the sequence may be like this, 6. It should be divisible by 6 means positive number. 1 is not divisible by 6. 2 is not. 6 is divisible by 6. 6 1s are 6. Then 6 2s are how much it is? Tell me. 6 2s are 12. 6 3s are 18. 6 4s are 24. Like this, you have to find the sum up to 40 terms. Up to how many terms? 40 terms you have to find the sum. If you are good enough, or intelligent enough, to understand the mathematical intricacies, this problem can be solved by two ways. Two ways we can solve. I solve this problem by two ways. Understand the beauty of mathematics. The person who understands the beauty of mathematics, he can definitely lead his life very nicely. See, this problem can be solved by two ways. First, I see. 
first i write the sequence like this this uh, series we have to find the sum of 6 plus 12 plus 18 up to how many terms 40 terms simple it is when you see this one a is equal to 6 first term is 6 understood first term is 6 d how much is added every time 6 only d is equal to 6 How many terms we require? Forty terms. Sum of the forty terms. Therefore, m is equal to forty. What you have to find? Yes, forty. This is the way of solving a problem in a simple manner. A ordinary student solve a problem like this. We can solve by two different ways. First, first way, easy method. I mean, a we know easy. D. Six 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 are there. Here is how many terms? Forty terms. Yes, forty. Which formula? D is there. Therefore, the formula is yes sir is equal to n by two into two a plus n minus one of d. D is there. You have to write this formula. S n is equal to n by two into two a plus n minus one into b. Simple substitute, you get the answer. Easy way. Ordinary student solves like this. Yes, forty. N is equal to forty by two. Two into a means six plus n means forty minus one. N is forty. D is equal to six. This you have to simplify. Your intense hand. Yes, forty is equal to forty divided by two. When forty is divided by two, you get twenty. Twenty is half of forty. Into two into six, it means twelve. Plus forty minus one is thirty-nine. Into six. Thirty-nine into six. Forty minus one is thirty-nine into six. You have to concentrate. I have seen some of the students written the test. They are adding this and then multiplying. See those two students. I tell you, I am very sorry to tell this. Those students are not eligible to sit in sixth time. How you can add and multiply this? First you multiply and then add. Board mass. Brackets of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. After multiplication only you have to do addition. I have seen some of the papers. They are adding this. We feel that how they are kept to ten standard. We always feel seeing it because ten standard. This is the easiest step chapter. This chapter only some of children are finding it difficult means. Then how they are going to learn trigonometry, analytical geometry? Difficult. You have to follow this. First, you multiply this. You can be able to multiply this. Yes, forty is equal to twenty. Now don't add this. First you multiply this. Six nine six up fifty four. Nine six up fifty four. See in ten standard we are writing the tables. Nine six up fifty four five. Six three up six three up eighteen eighteen plus five twenty three eighteen plus five is twenty three. I repeat once again. Nine six are fifty four five. Now see the three to six is eighty. Eighteen plus five is twenty three. Now what we have to do? Tell me what we have to do. We should not multiply this. You have to add and then come to here. Inside the bracket, what is there? See, twelve plus two thirty four. You have to add two plus four. Unit place, unit place. I have seen papers. People, children are not able to add addition. Also, they are finding it difficult. Two plus four is six. Two plus four is six. One plus three is four. And the two thirty four plus twelve is equal to two forty six. Now S forty is equal. Now you have to multiply. 
what we have to do? 0 now multiply. 2 into 6, 12. 1. 2 into 4, 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. 9. 2 into 2 is 4. I left 1, 0. I write 0 now. Again I write. 2 into 6, 12. 1. 2 fours are 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 twos are 4. Therefore, the answer is yes, 40. Some of the first 40 terms which are uh, positive integers, 40 positive integers, which are divisible by 6 is 4920. That is the answer. This is one method. This is a method followed by an ordinary student. Suppose you are little bit intelligent, you go for another method. That method I will give you. That is also very simple, easier than this. But you should know the technique of understanding that particular problem. See, first, first complete, we complete this. What the uh, question, the question is, find the sum of the first 40 positive integers which are divisible by 6. Which are divisible by 6. 6 plus 12 plus 8 up to 40 times. First term is 6. Common difference is 6. 40 times sum we want. Yes, 40. The formula is this. How to understand this formula you will find? Because last term is not given, D is given. Therefore, we will uh, apply this formula, then substitution and simplification. The next method is, see here, uh, this is the intelligent method. 6 plus 12 plus 18, up to how many terms? 40 terms. How many terms? 40 terms. All these numbers are divisible by 6. Therefore, I can take 6 as a common factor. I can take what? 6 as a common factor. All numbers are divisible by what? 6. That is the knowledge you should have. 6. Remove 6 from this. When you remove 6 from this, this becomes 1. Because 6 1s are 6. Plus 6 2s are 6 2s are 12. Plus 6 3s are 18. How many terms you want? 40. Plus 40. We can even find which is the last term also. 6 into 40 is 240. 240 is the last term. Right? That word, uh, forget that. You can write like this. Because all these numbers have been 6 as a common term. See the numbers inside this. It is nothing but natural number. Sum of the first and natural number, there is a formula called Sn is equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Means, I can write this 6 into S6 into, I write it following, 6, 6 is here, into, this I can write as 6 S40 natural number. Natural number means what? All natural numbers are included. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Like that. For finding the natural number, there is a formula. That is, S n is equal to n into n plus 1 divided by right? S n is equal to n into n plus 1 divided by I am applying this one. Therefore, this becomes what? This becomes 6 into. In the place of uh, uh, S 40, I can write 40 n, n means 40 into n plus 1, 40 plus 1, 41 divided by n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Right? Now we simplify this. Oh, 2 1s are, I can cancel this one, I write right? this one. 2 20s are, 2 1s are 2, I can cancel this also. Uh, sorry, 2 1s are 2 20s. Now multiply. 6 into, first you multiply these two. 2 into 1 is 2. 2 into 4 is 8. See, no. 20 into 41 is 820. Now multiply by 6. Which is equal to 6 into 0. 0. 6 2s are 12. 1. 
Six eights are six eights are what? Six eights are forty-eight plus one forty-nine. This is also one hundred. Here also four thousand nine hundred twenty. We got here also we got four thousand nine hundred twenty. But this method is a method of intelligence. Here we are using the formula sum of the first forty natural numbers. The formula for the finding the natural numbers is S n is equal to n into n plus one divided by two. This this formula can be used only when to find sum of all natural numbers from one to n. Here one, two, three, four, forty. Then forty sum of the first forty natural number is equal to forty into forty one divided by two. Into it is divisible by six. Therefore, six into yes, forty. Six into forty into forty one divided by two. This is the method already given in your textbook. Also, this formula is given. This is not the formula I came uh, came from somewhere else. No, it is there in the textbook. But this type of uh, method adopted by the students who can understand the problem properly. Therefore, read the problem properly. Understand. Get the mathematical skill. Don't simply solve blindly. Understand the problem and then solve. Then you can understand how how best the beauty of mathematics. One problem can be solved by two different methods, right? See, thirteenth problem. Find the sum of the first fifteen multi uh, multiples of eight. The previous problem what we did is uh, divisible by six. Divisible by six. This is multiple of By eight, therefore, students should be able to understand how nicely they framed the question. See, the previous problem divisible. A number has to divide it by a number which is divided by a particular number. That should be a multiple of that number. You should understand the concept of factors, multiples, everything. You should understand. Therefore, they are given everything. You see, find the sum of the first fifteen multiples. Fifteen multiples means of eight. First number is eight, multiple again. Second number is sixteen, multiple of eight, and it is also divisible by eight. Try to understand. Yeah. Multiple of eight is divisible by eight. I can give this problem as first fifteen numbers, positive numbers which are divisible by eight. Same number. Eight, sixteen. Next is twenty-four. How many? Such fifteen numbers. Fifteen. See, this problem is same as the previous problem. Previous problem six they are given, and this is forty terms they are given. This is multiple of eight. How many terms? Fifty. Therefore, this problem can also be solved by two ways. Two ways. One is by using the formula of natural numbers. Another one is usual formula of sum. We start with the same. First, we write it two methods. First one is eight, sixteen, twenty-four. Up to how many terms? Fifteen terms. Fifteen terms. A is equal to A. D is equal to A. Multiple of n is equal to fifteen. Yes, fifteen. We have to find. D is given. Last term is not given. N is known to us. Then the formula is S n is equal to n by two into two a plus n minus one into b. Formula. Now we have to substitute. So each problem is having its own varieties of problem is given. See last one was forty one. Then we can able to divide. This time fifty is given. You can't divide. Like that, all varieties are given. You have to practice by understanding the problem. So yes, fifteen is equal to n is equal to fifteen by two. Here we can't cancel this. Fifteen is not divisible by two. You have to keep it like this. Then two into a a is eight plus. n is equal to 15 15 minus 1 into d means d means yes 15 is equal to 
15 by 2 2 into 8 16 2 into 8 is 16 plus 15 minus 1 14 14 into 14 into 2 Next step is what? You have to multiply this 2 and then add to 16. Right. Then, yes, 15 is equal to 15 by 2 into 16 plus. Now multiply. 8 into 4, 32. 8 4s are 32, 3. 8 1s are 8 plus 3 is 11. 8 plus 3 is 11. 112. Yes, 15 is equal to 15 by 2 into 16. You have to add this. Now add. 6 plus 2, 8. 6 plus 2 is what? 8. 1 plus 1, 2. 1. 128. 16 plus 112 is equal to 1. Now we can't cancel this because this is an uh, odd number. This is an even number. We, but we can cancel this. Then right. well, I write it here. Yes, 15 is equal to. See, here cancel. Must be cancel. 2 1s are. 2 6 are 12. And 2 4s are 8. 64. Right? Now, 15 into 64. 15 into 64. You have to multiply. Yes, 15 is equal to, tell me, 15 fours are 60. 15 fours are what? 66. 15 six are, that will add 15 six. 15 six are 90. 90 plus 6, 96. Therefore, the answer should be 960. 15 fours are 60, 0, 6. 15, 6 are 19, 19 plus 6 is 960. See, this problem can be solved in another method also. The second method, uh, make it faster. Why I do all these things is, if you wanted to score good marks in SLC, you have to understand the problem and solve. Don't simply memorize the problem. Don't simply write the problem as it is. Don't simply see the video and write and note down and show to the teacher. No use in that. First, you have to understand the problem properly. What is the importance of problem? This type of learning mathematics is very useful for your higher studies. And every problem is having its own in-depth knowledge. We are learning only to gain knowledge. And nowadays, we started pretending that we are doing this. From many children are seen, they are writing assignments only to show to teachers. They don't know. When they ask questions, reverse questions, they don't understand. Don't do that. Try to understand. All these things what we do is because of your uh, well-being. See, in future you should learn properly. For your life only, for your future only we are working hard. Solve, understand and then solve. It is not to satisfy teachers. Don't satisfy, come and satisfy teachers. No use. Satisfy yourself. Learn properly. See, this problem can be solved by another method. That is the method of natural numbers. Where we write the sequence like this. Sequence one, right? when we put the plus, it should be series. See, 15 terms. Since all numbers are multiples of 8, I can take 8 as a common factor. It becomes 1 plus, 2 plus, 3, up to 15 terms. Up to 15 terms. 15 terms. When you see the numbers inside, all of them are natural numbers. To find the sum of the natural number, there is a trick. That is, Sn is equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2. Apply that, you can get the answer. Therefore, which is equal to 8 into, this can be written as, see, how I write, right? 15 into 16 by 2. How? Because, Sn is equal to n into n plus 1 by 2. SN is equal to what? N into N plus 1. 15 terms, first 15 terms of natural number. 15 into 16, N into N plus 1. Why? Then cancel this. 2 1s are, I can cancel by this, or I can cancel by this. Anything. 
I cancel by this one. Okay. Now what happened? This was 15 into 8 into 8, 64. 8 is how much? 64. Same number. 15 into 64. See? 15 into 60, uh, 64, 960 people. Here also 15 into 64. Did we get? How much? 15 fours are 60. 6. 15 6 are 90 plus 6, 96. Few steps. Interject. Again and again, I tell you, don't write simply blindly seeing the video. You have to solve independently. All these things what we do we only to make you to get good marks in your SLC examination. That is required for your future. Okay, don't do don't go for shortcuts. Work hard. Only one or two hours in a day if you work hard, in all throughout your life you enjoy. Now, if you don't uh, do work for one or two, three hours, then difficult for you in future. Therefore, you uh, understand the problem and solve. Two, two methods we are writing. Say, fourteenth problem. Find the sum of the odd numbers. Odd numbers means what? The number which is not divisible by two. Odd numbers. Between zero and fifty. Between zero and fifty, odd numbers means the first one is one. The next is 3, next is 5, these are all odd numbers. You know the difference between odd number and an even number. And up to 50, 50 is not an odd number. We should not go to the 51, 52, no you should not go there. Before, 0 and 50 means the last odd number between 0 and 50 is 49. 49. This is the list of numbers. If you see this list, it is an arithmetic progression. A is 1, common difference is 2. From one odd number to another odd number, the common difference is 2. We have to find the sum. How simple is it? Very simple, isn't it? Very simple. Last term we know, which is the last term? 49. Therefore, I write like this. 1 plus 3 plus 5 up to, it is not a term. We know the last term itself. Don't write terms here. It's the last term, not 49th term. It is 49. Difference you have to understand. Up to 40 terms, up to 50 terms, up to 49 means the number itself is 49. Right? What is A? A equals 1. D, if you wanted to find D, since we have written the common difference, D is equal to A2 minus A1. A2 is equal to 3, 3 minus 1, A2 is equal to, uh, D is equal to 2. And last number is given, L is given, L is 49. When L is given, but there is no N. How many terms are there, we don't know. The previous problem, they are given terms, 40 terms, 15 terms, N is given. Here N is not given, he is given the term itself. Therefore, we have to find N. After finding N only, you can find S. After finding N, you can find S. Right? First, we have to find the value of N. Since last number is known to us, I go for our first formula. A N is equal to A plus N minus 1 into D. This is the formula. Here A N and the last term is one and the same. 49 is equal to A is equal to 1. N we don't know. N minus 1. D is 2. So it's all you have to do. Simplification. 49 equals 1 plus 2 into N. 2N two minus 2. 49 equals 2N. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Now transfer minus 1 to this. 49 plus 1 is equal to 2n. 50 is equal to 2n. n is equal to 50 divided by 2. n is equal to 25. There are 25 odd numbers are there between 0 and 50. Very simple it is. 
from 0 to 50, there are 25 odd numbers, there are 25 even numbers. n is equal to 25. Once you know the value of n, you can find the sum using the uh, formula L. Therefore, Sn is equal to Sn is equal to L by 2 into A plus L. I use this formula. The reason of using this formula is I know the last term. Yes. N is 25. Is equal to 25 by 2 into A. A is 1. L is 49. Yes, 25 is equal to 25 by 2 into 1 plus 49 is 50. 1 plus 49 is equal to 50. 2 1s are 2 25s are. Yes, 25 is equal to. You have to multiply 25 into 25. 25 into 25 is 625. You know that squares, squares of 25 is 25 is equal to 6. Here there is a trick is there. Not there in the textbook, but you can understand this. See, yes, how much it is? 25. How much I got? 625. 625 means what? 25 into 25. Therefore, yes, 25 is equal to 25 into 25. Yes, 30 is equal to 30 into 30. Yes, 50 is equal to 50 into 50. Yes, 100 is equal to 100 into 100. Therefore, remember, there is one formula. You are going to use this formula in your higher class. Some students are great. Uh, see, we have seen the papers. By seeing the papers, we can understand. Some students are having a mathematical aptitude. They are intelligent students. For those students, I am mentioning here, some of the odd numbers, when they are given some of the odd numbers, there is a formula to find the sum of the odd numbers, sum of the all positive odd numbers from 1 to n positive odd numbers from 1 to n odd numbers when it is an odd number the sum is sn is equal to n square sn is equal to n square you are going to use this in your higher classes sn is equal to n square is the formula to find the sum of the first n odd numbers Suppose if I wanted to find the sum of the odd numbers, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus up to uh, 100 terms, means 100 into 100. Yes, sn is equal to h. If you are intelligent enough, find the formula. Now try to find the formula to find the sum of the even numbers. Do it. Do it. That is uh, uh, what is known as one, 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 one work for you people. Do it. But not required for the examination. This also not required for the examination. But you have to understand. Here, the, uh, what, what the problem is telling is, find the sum of all odd numbers up to 49. A is to, L is to, N we don't know. I calculate the N as 25. SN, SN is equal to, S25 is equal to 625. By this, we can understand. Sum of the first N odd numbers is given by the formula. SN is equal to N square. SL is equal to n square. That, that is not required for your SLC examination.